In this video, we're going to be talking about how to evaluate improper integrals. And in this particular problem, we've been asked to evaluate the integral of x squared over quantity 9 plus x to the sixth power over the interval negative infinity to positive infinity. Now we need to be able to recognize that this integral is an improper integral of case type 3, which means that the limits of integration a to b are negative infinity to positive infinity. When we have those exact limits of integration, negative infinity to positive infinity, then we're dealing with an improper integral of case type 3. And when we have that particular type, we're always going to use this formula over here to evaluate the improper integral. And what this formula tells us is that instead of evaluating over the interval negative infinity to positive infinity, we're going to separate this integral into two different integrals, which is going to allow us to split the interval into negative infinity to some constant c, and then some constant c to positive infinity. So in other words, if you imagine a number line, our original integral over here tells us that we're evaluating from negative infinity to positive infinity the entire number line. Our formula tells us that we are going to split this interval at some point, we'll call this c, and this is going to be some constant c, and then this first integral here is going to evaluate from negative infinity to c, and the second integral is going to ask us to evaluate from c to positive infinity, and so that way we are actually evaluating over the entire interval, negative infinity to positive infinity, we're just breaking the interval into two pieces. So what value do we pick for c? Well, you can actually pick any value you want on the interval negative infinity to positive infinity, but by convention we usually pick 0, because by picking 0 it's going to be easier for us to evaluate these definite integrals. So we'll go ahead and stick with that and we're going to say for us c is going to be equal to 0. And notice here that if we pick c equals 0, this first integral becomes negative infinity to 0, and that's just an improper integral of case type 2, where we have this negative infinity to some constant, in our case 0. The second integral is going to be an improper integral of case type 1, where we have some constant, in our case 0, to positive infinity. So since we're saying that c is equal to 0, we really just need to rewrite the original integral as the integral from negative infinity to 0 of x squared over 9 plus x to the sixth dx, the original function, plus the integral from 0 to positive infinity of x squared over 9 plus x to the sixth dx. Now we know from studying improper integrals of case type 1 and 2 that when we have integrals like this, what we need to do is remove the problem limit of integration. We need to remove the infinite limit of integration and replace it with some constant and then take the limit as that constant goes to, in this case, negative infinity or positive infinity. So in this first integral, in other words, we're going to be removing this problem limit of integration here, and we're going to replace it with a constant a. So then we're going to say the limit as a goes to negative infinity of the integral from a to 0 of x squared over 9 plus x to the 6 dx. So you can see here we took out the infinite limit of integration negative infinity, replaced it with a constant a, and we're just going to say the limit as a approaches negative infinity. And the reason that we do that is because technically we can't just plug in an infinite value to our function. Technically speaking, we have to plug in the constant and then take the limit as that constant approaches the value we're interested in, negative infinity. So this is the case type 2 improper integral, that's how we deal with it. Here for case type 1, we do a similar thing. We take out this problem limit of integration positive infinity here, and we're going to say the limit as b approaches positive infinity of the integral from 0 to b of x squared over 9 plus x to the 6 dx. So at this point, we've done everything we need to do in order to convert our limits of integration to values that are acceptable. We have here constants a and 0 and constants 0 and b, so we have no issue there. Now all we need to do is evaluate the integral, so take the integral of x squared over 9 plus x to the 6th, and then for both of these, we'll evaluate over the interval, in this case a to 0, and in this case 0 to b, and then we'll evaluate at the limits. So first, we need to evaluate the integral. Well, how are we going to take the integral of this particular function, x squared over quantity 9 plus x to the 6th? Well, for this particular function, we're going to need to use u substitution with u equal to x cubed. The reason we pick x cubed is because this x to the 6th here, when we plug in for u, 
will become u squared because x to the third times x to the third is x to the sixth, which means that x to the sixth is going to be equal to u squared. And of course, this is also convenient because when we take the derivative of u to get du, we get 3x squared dx. And notice now we have this x squared value, which hopefully we'll be able to cancel with the x squared value in the numerator of our original function. So now we realize that we have inside of our integral here x squared dx. So what we can do is solve this equation for x squared dx by dividing both sides by 3. When we do that, we'll get x squared dx is equal to du over 3. Now we can make a substitution for x squared dx of du over 3. So let's go ahead and try to simplify this integral. We'll have the limit as a approaches negative infinity of the integral from a to 0. And now making a u substitution. In our denominator, we'll have 9 plus u squared. So 9 plus u squared. In place of x squared dx, we're going to plug in du over 3. So we're going to have 1 here. We're going to plug in du over 3. But instead of du over 3, we'll pull the 1 third out in front. So we'll get 1 third, and we'll just have du left over here. Now we can go ahead and do the same thing for our second integral since we have the same function. So the limit from 0 to b, and we're going to have 1 over 9 plus u squared du, we need to pull the 1 third out in front of the integral. And it's important to remember also that our limits of integration at this point still relate to x because we've made a u substitution. We need to know that these are limits of integration with respect to x. And this tells us, of course, that we're going to have to make a back substitution to get our integral value back in terms of x instead of u before we can evaluate over these limits of integration. Now, in order to take the integral of the remaining function we have here, 1 over 9 plus u squared, what we need to remember is the common integral formula where we have the integral of 1 over a squared plus x squared dx is going to be equal to 1 over a times the inverse tangent function, or arctan, of x over a. So a is a constant in this formula, right? And in our case, our constant is 9, which means that when we match it up to this formula here, a is going to be equal to 3 because 3 squared gives us 9. So we know a is equal to 3. And in this case, we have u squared. When we compare that to x squared, we know that u is equal to x. So our formula tells us that in place of the integral here, we're going to plug in 1 third arctan, or the inverse tangent function, of u over 3. So we need to substitute this in for our integral, and we're going to get the limit as a goes to negative infinity of 1 third times our value over here that we found, which was 1 third inverse tangent function of u over 3. We can go ahead at this point and back substitute for u. We know that u is equal to x cubed, so we're going to get x cubed over 3. And of course, we're going to be evaluating this on the interval x equals a to x equals 0. Because we have this back in terms of x already, we can just say a to 0. Then we're going to add to that the limit as b goes to positive infinity of 1 third times, again this value we found here, 1 third inverse tangent function of, and again back substituting for u, we get x cubed over 3 evaluated over the interval x equals 0 to x equals b. Now that we have our integrals evaluated, we can go ahead and evaluate over the interval a to 0 and 0 to b. So in the case of this first limit here, we're going to have the limit as a goes to negative infinity. We'll combine here these 1 thirds, so we'll get 1 ninth tangent to the negative 1 or inverse tangent function, and we'll plug in our upper limit of integration 0. So we'll get 0 cubed over 3, it's just 0, so we get tangent to the negative 1 of 0. Then we want to subtract whatever you get when we plug in a, so we'll get minus 1 ninth inverse tangent function of a cubed over 3. Now we'll add to that the limit as b approaches positive infinity of 1 ninth inverse tangent function of evaluating at the upper limit of integration b, we get b cubed over 3. Then we'll subtract from that whatever we get when we plug in our lower limit of integration 0, so we'll get minus 1 ninth 
inverse tangent function of 0 cubed over 3, which is just 0. Now we know that the inverse tangent function of 0 is just 0, which means that this term here is going to give us a 0. We know also that this term here is going to give us a 0. So we're just going to be left with the limit as a approaches negative infinity of this term here, and then added to that the limit as b approaches positive infinity of this term right here. So evaluating at our limits, plugging in negative infinity for a, what we get here is negative infinity cubed. That's still going to give us a negative infinity because we have here, when we cube the negative, we have negative times a negative times a negative, which is still a negative. And infinity cubed is still just going to give us infinity. So we have essentially negative infinity divided by 3. Well, dividing by 3 isn't going to make a difference when it's negative infinity. So we essentially just have the inverse tangent function of negative infinity. So this here becomes negative 1 ninth inverse tangent function of negative infinity infinity. And then when we evaluate at this limit here, we're plugging positive infinity in for b. Cubing that, we still get positive infinity. Dividing by 3, we're still going to get positive infinity. So we're left with plus 1 ninth inverse tangent of positive infinity. Well, when we look at the inverse tangent function, if we take it out toward negative infinity, if we approach negative infinity, we can see that the inverse tangent function approaches negative pi over 2. So this inverse tangent function of negative infinity becomes negative pi over 2. So we get negative pi over 2. And then we have plus 1 ninth. And if we look at the oops inverse tangent function, as we approach positive infinity, we see that the inverse tangent function approaches positive pi over 2. So we get positive pi over 2 in place of inverse tangent of positive infinity. Now notice we're going to get these negatives to cancel, and we're going to be left with pi over 18 plus pi over 18, which is going to be equal to 2 pi over 18, or when we simplify, we get pi over 9. So because we got a real number answer here, we know that this integral converges, and not only do we know that it converges, but we know that it converges to the value pi over 9.